All right. Oh, there we are. Hey, good morning. <laughs> Is everybody awake? All right. So if you guys want to stand up, we're going to start with some worship this morning. Um, the first song is Clapping is a Requirement. I know from experience our youth can't stay on beat, but I'm hoping you all can show them up. Um, <laughs> we'll see. But so we're going to start off with a glorious day. There we go. The drama will keep you on beat. bring up some verses. I'm used in the youth room there, one on either side, sorry. Um, they're going to bring up some verses from Psalms. And as I was trying to go to sleep, I'm a night shifter, if you guys don't know that. And so going to bed before like two o'clock is really hard for me in the morning. So I was trying to go to sleep and I was having this little mental battle last night, just really fighting some thoughts and 
not good enough, this, not this, not that, you know, all these things. And God kind of, and I was praying about, you know, tomorrow and, or today and, you know, leading worship and just what scriptures to share if something came up. And God brought the scripture to mind that I had read in Psalms 18, two, three weeks ago. Um, and the next song we're doing is called Who You Say I Am. And so often we don't listen to who God says we are and we listen to what everybody else says we are or, and ourselves, what we say we are. So just thinking about who God says I am and I'm free and I'm, um, that he has set us free and also that um, we're chosen, not forsaken. He is for us, not against us. And then the scripture from Psalms is going to come up here. It's Psalms 18. And there's verses 1 through 3, and then verses 17 through 19. So 1 through 3 says, and we'll skip this part. This is just the heading. Oh, there we go. Go back. One more. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And then keep going. Verse 3 says, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies and then we had to vet verse 17 through 19 and verse 19 is the one I want to focus on but it says he rescued me from my strong enemy from those who hated me for they were too mighty for me they confronted me in the day of my calamity but the Lord was my support and this is the verse I loved he brought me out into a broad place he rescued me because he delighted in me and I love that <laughs> Yeah, I know, Janie. I love that because I read that a few weeks ago and it was like, he rescued me because he delighted in me and all my mess and who I am and who I think I'm not. He delights in me and he loves me. So as we sing this next song, Who You Say I Am, just think about that. That God looks at us and we're a mess. I'm a mess. I don't have it all together. But he looks at it and he delights in us. So that, <laughs> So just think about that as we sing this next song and just how much that he loves us that he died for us even though we are a mess. Um, so yeah.
Shout your praise Our hearts will cry 
so much for letting us come to your house and just to praise your name this morning lord i thank you for the privilege that we get just to come at your feet lord and praise you lord i pray for this day as we get together as women and just get into your word and just spend time um loving on each other and fellowshipping and hearing your word lord and just praising you just bless this time lord we just love you for who you are in your holy and most precious name amen Welcome to all of you. Welcome to Rolling Hills Baptist Church to the ladies retreat and we have a great day planned for you. And you know, I'm having a ladies Bible study at my house each week and this session we're talking about happiness, happiness in the Lord. So we're really hoping that you have a happy day today in the Lord. Yes. Um, and to make you laugh maybe just a little bit, we have a little bit of a risque thing for you. We're allowed to use the men's restrooms today. <laughs> only today. And only the ones in this hallway and the ones down in the foyer where you all came in and registered. Only those. Only today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we do have a lot planned for you. We have uh, sessions where Leanne will be speaking. We have lunch. We have skits. We will have more music later. And thank you, youth, very much. Uh, but we, we do hope that you will enjoy yourself today, that you will become closer together today, and that you will be lifted up by the Lord as a woman, as a woman who loves the Lord. Yes. Um, we do have a skit coming up, and after that, we will have Leanne Rollins speak to us, who has flown in all the way from Rollinsville. <laughs> and I know that she will bless your hearts today. Oh, oh my goodness, bless you. That's, that's kind of like sorry, a it's allergies, thing. allergies, I'm sorry. Oh, thanks, thanks. That should clear you right up. <laughs> well, I just... No way. Sorry. Jeez. Oh, my goodness. My phone is so spudged. I can't see a thing. Let me see. Look. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh. Honey, that looks like a three square. Look at that. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> Still no good. Still can't see a thing. Well, that's because your glasses are smudged. What? Yes. No. Oh my goodness, look at that. They <laughs> sure are. Girl, I got you covered here. Look, here's two for one lens, oh. and then you got two for the other. There you go. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. This is gonna help a ton. I just know it. Yeah. Well, that's cool. ah, I can see. Oh, and I can also see that your lipstick gets a little smudged. Oh, my goodness. Girl, no worries. That's just three square. That's not a big deal. I got you. Look how big this thing is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I don't know how you just did that, but you just turned a three to a four. This is, the, this is the first and the last time I'm t having lipstick on. Well, Mama better? Shoop, what's going on with you over there? These hot flashes are like the worst. You just wait. Oh my goodness. Here you go. There's one for your left armpit. And then here's one for your right armpit. Hey, just, here, here's give, us the, give us the whole thing. Listen, why don't you just take the rest of that and you just hold on to it. You're welcome. Yep. I got more. I got plenty. Yeah. Yeah. I got more. <laughs> boyfriend broke up last night. Oh, honey. Oh, I got you. I got you. Look at that. Listen, there's 10 squares right there, and the breaks are hard. That deserves 10 squares. Worst mistakes. Oh, well, 
he didn't break up with me. I broke up with him. You hey, broke up no. with David? Oh. Listen. Okay, first of all, you get 10 for heartbreak, but you only get 5 for guilt. <laughs> so you take that 5, and that should, that should help. Poor Steven. Poor Steven. So, Tiffany, how many rolls of toilet paper do you actually have in that bag? Well, I just got what I need. Listen, I don't know why everybody was complaining in 2020 that they couldn't find toilet paper because my entire guest room is full. Oh. Oh, so that explains why I couldn't find any, and our family did without. I went through four cities trying to find toilet paper last year and not a square. And I had to use newspaper. <laughs> paper towels, oh. disposable. <laughs> but ladies, ladies, this is my ministry. Okay, so I don't know. I, I know Leanne's going to talk about unity today, and I'm not exactly sure what she's going to say, but I think that we found something that unites us. What? what? Toilet paper. <laughs> Girl, look at the ministry here today. Yeah. It's united us. It's brought us together. Connected. All right, guys. Thank you. Well, it was good to see you guys. Yeah, you too. You yeah. okay. Well, I don't know why they're being so negative. <laughs> don't you feel connected, Ellie? <laughs> yeah, I'd say I feel real connected. All right. Now that we're all connected. <laughs> Y'all, I am so happy that this day has arrived. We've been praying about it for a couple of months now, and, um, and it just, uh, I've been praying for y'all. I have been praying for each of you, and you might say by name, and the answer is no, but I have been praying for each of you that was coming, and that you would come with a heart just ready to receive. Uh, whatever the Lord wants to show you, and I, I don't know what that is. Um, when Danny and I were newlyweds, um, he and I went to a pastor's conference. And I went with a critical spirit. I, a guy got up, and he started preaching in a red suit. And for some reason, this person with a not good attention span was totally distracted. And I was sitting there and the whole time going, I can't believe, why would he wear a red suit? I mean, that's just ridiculous. So I lean over to my husband and I said, I can't even listen because he's got this red suit on. And he goes, <laughs> and he said, honey, he said, almost everyone can teach us a nugget. And of course, then I was immediately convicted, but I also, it was a great lesson for me to learn, uh, young in the ministry, that almost everybody could teach me something, and that I, my desire then was to always walk away with a nugget. So that is what I have prayed for y'all, that you would at least walk away with a nugget. Now, I don't know what that nugget's going to be. I don't know if it's uh, going to be from me or a, a skit. I mean, really, we've already gotten a nugget, right? I mean, we already know that TP unites, and so we can all go home. <laughs> we got our nugget for today. Um, or maybe, uh, maybe it's another skit, or maybe it's something that y'all discuss uh, around the lunch table. I don't know. But it is my prayer that you walk away with something. Uh, maybe it's just the fellowship time that you needed today. And, and I get that because I definitely uh, needed it myself. Uh, so what my prayer is too is that we wouldn't come with critical spirits like what I had. Uh, but that we would just come ready to receive. Um, now I, I don't know if y'all, I know it confused people. I, and it's legit. Um, why it confused people because um, the theme of this was being knit together in love and it's in the verses in Colossians 2.2 2, that um, my goal is that you be encouraged in heart and knit together in love and, and some people thought that maybe we were doing knitting which is legit because I do a craft class periodically at our church and so to think that I might decide to do a knitting class is not unheard of but I don't know how to knit so that would be a problem. Um, but um, Tiffany made this for me, and she's un unable to be here today. And this is crocheting, and I honestly don't know the difference. But um, 
the thing about this is, and the reason why we chose that particular, particular version of scripture is because some of them say united together in love, which is also a great word. But knit is a visual word to me, and uh, I'm kind of a visual learner, and I liked that because at one point, well, because she did two different colors, this was two different pieces of yarn, but, you know, when you're making a blanket or something, you start off with a single piece, right? But then as it gets knitted together, then it forms something, and it forms something that has strength and that um, binds you together and that's what I loved about the word knit because it 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 there was a, a weaving uh, the idea that that apart from each other we wouldn't be held together I'm also very aware that if I were to go in the middle of this cute little thing that she made me that if I cut a thread what would happen it would unravel exactly right and again that was just such a beautiful picture I know some of you here um, know me, um, the majority, and I, all I can say is bless your heart. <laughs> I mean, if you know me, you know why I said that. Um, and uh, that was one of those southern bless your hearts. And, um, but um, some of you don't uh, know me, and, and I just say congratulations. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, but whether you're here from our church or not, we're talking about being united and love, um, and I want you to know, first of all, we're not doing this because I think there's a problem in the church, okay? That's important for y'all to know. This was not an underhanded way for me to, to try to get around and say, oh, well, there's something going on in the church that we need to be united. That's not it. Actually, it said I want us to protect what we got, um, and um, so if you're here and you don't go to our church, you attend another church, then I hope you can take what we learned today and take it back to your church. If you don't go to church at all, there are principles that we talk about in the family, the body of Christ, that you can use in your own family or in your work environment or whatever. So I pray that every one of you, whether you attend Rolling Hills, attend another church, or don't attend church, that you can walk away with something today. So um, let's um, go to the Lord in prayer because I need it. <laughs> okay, let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Lord, we come to you right now because, because we need you. And um, it's our heart's desire to um, be everything that you've called us to be, for our church to be everything that it's supposed to be, for our families to be everything they're supposed to be. And Lord, right now, as I stand here as such an imperfect pe person, I'm just so grateful that you actually use broken things. And so, Lord, we just uh, commit this time to you, for you and you alone to be high and lifted up. And it's in your holy and mighty name I pray. Amen. Alrighty, so let's just go ahead and get started. So, um, okay, the verse, it says this, my goal is that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love. Um, and so basically that's my goal. That was, <laughs> that was the goal in scripture, but it has been our goal too, that today that you walk away from here encouraged. Now I find several things in scripture many scriptures that talk about being united and um but I'm going to focus on one because I don't want to jump totally all over scripture to try to uh, cover this topic and um so this is it I want you to I'm going to read a scripture and I want you to note how many times the word calling or called a form of call uh, comes out and how many times um the word one is used okay now, you don't have to count them. I just want you to take note. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6 says this. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another and love, being diligent to preserve the unity 
of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all, through all and in all. Okay, so according to this scripture, uh, of course, our theme is kind of based on love, but according to this scripture, we see that there's something else that's pretty important. It talks about preserving the unity, and there's something that's really important in this scripture to preserve our unity, and that is our call, our call. You know, Rick Warren um, said that people often ask him about his church, and he says the key to the success is unity of mission, that they all know what we're trying to accomplish. Now, this doesn't mean that we all think alike. It doesn't mean that we all agree, but we all agree on our purpose, why we are together, why we have um, a, a, a church family, why we have a family, period. We all have a purpose. Now, what happens when we focus on our call is that it, it no longer matters how we do something. What matters is that the purpose is accomplished. Now, granted, I'm talking about scripturally. We're not going to accomplish something in an unscriptural way. That's just understood, y'all, all weekend, I mean, all day, just understand that. But what happens is when we're focused on our call, then that means that we lay our preferences aside, so it doesn't matter how we do something as long as we know that the mission is going to be accomplished. Satan wants us to focus on the method so we will be distracted about the mission. Okay, so if um, the calling is um, important to unity, then let's think about what the calling is, right? If, if that's what we're supposed to be focused on. What are we supposed to be focused on? Well, what we're supposed to be focused on is that the church is called to lead people to Christ and mature those people into disciples who lead people to Christ, who mature people to disciples and lead people to Christ. Now, I want you to know that's the simplest definition of the purpose of the church, but it is um, the purpose of the church with the foundation of, always to bring honor and glory to the Lord. That is our foundational mission, that everything we do brings honor and glory to him. So if we agree on the mission, then why does the method matter? If, if I know that this way the method will be accomplished and this way the method, I mean, and the, the mission will be accomplished with this method and the mission will be accomplished with this method, who cares? Really? Who cares? Uh, we were, um, Danny pastored a church down in Louisiana. And y'all, the church uh, had dark paneling walls and it had a huge balcony that, that came about a third of the way across the congregation. When you walked in there, you thought you'd walked into a cave. I mean, it was dark. No amount of lighting could light up that place. And so we, um, you know, the church began to discuss painting the paneling. But you know what? There were people whose grandparents had put that paneling up. And so they didn't want us to paint that paneling because it had sentimental value to them. Now, um, my husband stood before the church and he said, I'm going to be totally honest with y'all. If I heard and found out that painting the walls purple would lead people to Christ, I'd be at Sherwin-Williams right now, even though I don't like the color purple. Because you see, the method didn't matter. All his focus was on the mission. And if these walls are, are making people come in and not feel good, then, then let's get rid of the walls. Now, I want to make a point about this, and I say this lightly because, believe me, these people are precious friends of ours. We still have tons of friends in Louisiana, and y'all know that, by the way. I post even about things that have gone on in Louisiana, the hurricanes and all of that. But I want you to know those walls, which it did eventually get painted, just to let you know, 
But those walls have been through two hurricanes. And right now, they can't meet in that church because of that. And I don't know if y'all know, but recently, Louisiana had flooding this past week. So I want y'all to see, those walls aren't eternal. Those walls, they, they come and go. But the people that have been led to the Lord in that building, those are the eternal things. Okay, so... So our, our calling is what's important. But, but now let's look at the word one in that verse because that was obviously repeated multiple times. It says one spirit. We're of one spirit. Well, um, the spirit that is in all believers is, the, is what gives us direction. It is what protects us. It's what guides us. He is our comforter. Um, and it's through the Holy Spirit that we can agree on anything, to be honest with you. And, and also not just agree, but have peace when we don't agree. I, I want you to know that there are friends that I have said, and even to, to my husband and him to me, um, I'm not sure I see it that way, but I trust the Lord in you. And so... There have been times that, you know, I, in my mind, there is this method that we need to do something or something that needs to be done. And I am think I'm not seeing this. But you know what I do then? I, I just step back and I have to trust the Lord to, to work in that person's heart or, listen, to work in mine. <laughs> okay? Because you know what? Believe it or not, I can be wrong. It's rare. <laughs> but it happens and so I have to step back every now and then and say you know Lord you know this isn't really going the way I saw I I, I saw it going but I'm gonna pray for that person for you to give them wisdom and insight and Lord I need you to give me the same um, so that we can be on the same page Um, it, it says in that verse it says that to preserve the unity what that word preserve lets me know is that it's work. In us trying to preserve our unity, whether it's here in the body of Christ or whether it's in your family body or whatever it is, it's work to do that. We've got people with different opinions and different problems and baggage, and, and, and it's a job, but it's something that is worth us working for. Now let's go to the next word. It talked about one body. We look at our human bodies and we know that they're all interconnect, you know, interconnected and one is function, the function of one part of the body is important to the function of the other parts of the body. And we know that we can do without body parts, you know, I mean, we know that, we see people that do that, but we also know that when that does happen, other parts of the body have to compensate for that, right? And they are oftentimes doing something that they weren't made to do, but they have to because they're missing um, a body part. So we desperately need to recognize that we need each other in order to function as a healthy body, okay? I mean, we know body parts we can we can function but we know that it's difficult and I'll talk about more the body of Christ in the next session uh, after our break and then there's another one word that I want to talk about we're one in faith now what is that Um, well we know that if you're a believer that means that you've trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior that is our faith that he is the only way. Well, there's no other option. As believers in Christ, we believe that there's no other uh, journey that we can go on that will get us where we want to go, right? <laughs> um, that this is it. Being a, a believer in Christ, totally and completely submitted to him, that is our one faith. And then it talks about one hope. What is our one hope? Our one hope is that we have eternity. First of all, we have abundant life now. We have the uh, joy of knowing him. 
Y'all, the scripture tells us that it says, and this is eternal life, that you might know him, the one true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Y'all, eternal life doesn't start when we die. That's just a continuation of eternal life. Eternal life started the moment I received Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I received him and, and, and I have the privilege now of knowing him. And I, I love that when I, when, when I finally discovered that the definition, that's the only place in scripture that eternal life is defined. And this is eternal life that they might know thee. So eternal life really involves heaven, but eternal life involves knowing him. That we have the privilege now um, as believers in Christ to know him. And so that is our hope. Our hope is now in, in the present. And then we have hope in eternity. That we will spend eternity with him. So God has called the church to do a ministry that no other organization can do. Now y'all we have a lot of parachurch organizations right. That help the homeless and, and crisis pregnancy centers and all of that. And those are great ministries that our church helps with. And that individuals in the church help with. But no other ministry does the ministry of the body of Christ. Because God ordained this ministry and he ordained what it was supposed to do. Um, so if we're not functioning properly as, as the body of Christ, then there will be things that don't get done. No matter how many parachurch organizations there are, there will be things that won't get done. So according to Ephesians 4, our calling is important, and it tells us how to perform that calling. Okay, listen to this. It says, with humility, with gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. None of those qualities are qualities that we all possess in our own self. Those are qualities that we can only possess when we have the Holy Spirit working in us. Okay, so now we've talked about um, the calling, but now I want to talk about the other part that, that we're supposed to be focusing on this uh, this day is love. Um, okay, so we know the verse, or most of us should know the verse, in John 13, 35. By this they'll know that you're my disciples if you have, what? Love one for another. I mean, that's pretty plain. You know, it says what it says. Um, but it's important for us to really recognize that the lost world is looking for us, his disciples, to be different. They don't expect us to be like the world. They want us to be different. And they're confused when we are not. And it turns them away. If they hear of arguing going on in, in, in a church, and believe me, the community knows what goes on in a church. Um, it's important for us to notice that we're supposed to be different because difference attracts people. Sameness doesn't attract. You know, in the sense that if, if I see something, I go, oh, man, that's so cool. I've never done that before. That's really neat. If it's something that is exactly like me, then why would I change? Why would I come to Christ if I don't see any difference in you than I have in me? You don't have victory in your life? I don't have victory in my life. I struggle. You know, you have anger issues. Well, I deal with that too sometimes. Then why would, and, and you're argumentative with everybody and they see that amongst believers, then why would they want that? I mean, I wouldn't. Um, and so it's important for us to really take to heart that the world expects us to be different. Now, this command to love Others um, is not new. That's in the Old Testament. In Leviticus 19.18, it says, The command is given to love your neighbor as yourself. In Matthew 22, when Jesus was asked what was the greatest commandment, he said, he quoted Deuteronomy, likewise, Old Testament, that we were to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and might. And then he quoted, and the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. 
Well, what does that mean? Well, let's see. We value our desires, we value our own opinions, we value our own experiences, and boy, we are willing to fight for those. So basically, all I just said is what you're supposed to do for your neighbor. You're supposed to value their opinions, value their expense, experiences, their desires. Um, you know, it's, it, it's easy to quote that, we're to love our neighbors as ourselves, but it's harder to do that. And you know Why? Because we really love ourselves. And, and so to love someone as equally as we love ourselves is really hard. But um, Jesus never leaves it there. You know, to us, that's stretching us. To love someone else so as much as I love myself. And, and most of us don't admit that, but we do. We love ourselves. We think about ourselves all the time but Jesus always stretches us a little bit farther and um, so the verse before verse 35 in John 13 34 is the kicker Jesus says this a new command I give you love one another as I have loved you so we are to love one another um, so now we only thought it was hard to love as, uh, our neighbor as ourself. And now he's wanting us to love as he has loved. There is no way I can cover this topic because we know from Genesis to Revelation, we learn about the love of God, right? And so there's no way this topic can be covered. But, and again, I don't want to jump all over scripture. So I'm going to read, um, I'm going to read from Philippians, okay? And um, Philippians 2, 1 through 8. And I'm hoping I can read it. Okay, Philippians 2, 1 through 8. Okay, I'm going to, please don't lose me because it's, it's eight verses. It says, if therefore there is any, uh, any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion. First of all, I want y'all to know that if is not an if, it's a since. Since there is consolation, since there is, okay? Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Again, calling, okay, one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you regard one another as more important than himself. Okay, not equal, more important. Okay, that just really, that's just going way too far. <laughs> that's just so hard to do. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also the interest of others. Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking on the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on the cross. Okay, so we are to love as Christ loved. Okay, so I know we're kind of just skimming this topic on how Christ loved us, but I want you to note here that Paul didn't talk about things that they did to love like Christ. He talked about attitudes of the heart to love like Christ. He also knew that there were differences. Unity and uniformity are two different things. Um, uniformity is, is where, we, where we feel pressure from the outside to act or, or be a certain way. And unity comes from the heart. It, it comes from the, the inside. And that's why Paul is not addressing their actions. He's not saying, okay, I need you to go about and go to everybody's house and I want y'all to have meetings. That's not what he said. He, he talked about humility. He talked about 
the things that we deal with on the inside, that's how we're going to love the way that he loved us. Our basic nature is selfish. I and mean, we're just selfish, self-centered people. And we see that, man, we see that in Hollywood marriages all the time, right? It's all about me, 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 me. They didn't make me happy. And the problem is when, when in the relationship there's just me and there's not we, then there's no unity because you can't have unity with one person. And so that's the same in any, in a family, in, uh, in our church family, even at work. We know that in work, what? There has to be a team spirit. That's part of the way that God made us, that we need one another. Um, so we love like Jesus. In verse 3, it says, by doing nothing from jealousy or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regarding others or esteeming others is more important than yourself. So humility is a little bit of a tricky word because... Humility is not thinking lowly of yourself. Humility is really just not thinking of yourself. <laughs> it, it's, it's where we're not concerned about ourselves. So we're not obsessed with that. And, and people get confused about humility because they think if they put themselves down and I'm just a horrible person, that that's humility. Someone that is putting themselves down is still what? thinking of who themselves exactly they're still obsessed with themselves they're still self-centered and so uh, humility is really just not thinking of yourself but the tricky thing about humility is as soon as you think you have it you've lost it <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, I'm so humble. <laughs> I mean, you know, that just, it doesn't work. And so it's a little bit of a, a tricky thing to obtain. And so we have to get to the point where basically we just say, Lord, I'm not seeking to be humble. I'm just seeking you and I'm seeking to do to others what you would have me to do. And then before we know it, we're not thinking of ourselves. Now, the truly humble person knows who they are in Christ. So they don't have to belittle themselves. I mean, I prayed. I, we are all broken. We are all broken people. And I'm grateful God uses broken people. We all recognize that. You know, if, if we didn't think we were broken, we wouldn't have um, been restored. That's how God works, you know. He, he, uh, when we recognize that we're lost, it's how we get saved. When we recognize that we're broken, it's how we get restored. And so... Um, we do see ourselves. It's not a, a matter that we don't have eyes to view ourselves the way that we are. But when we recognize who we are in Christ and whose we are, then we just rest in that. We rest in the work that he did on the cross. So we don't have to belittle ourselves. Now, Satan belittles us. Oh, believe me, leading up to this, Satan was feeding me, beating me over the head. And he does that. He, he belittles us, but Christ doesn't. Christ doesn't. He sees us restored. And so when we um, are resting in who Christ is, it's easier for us to love other people. First of all, look who we are in Christ. We are accepted, right? Just the way we are. We are loved. We are forgiven. We are reconciled. And if we're to love others the way Christ loved us, then we are to accept. We are to love. We are to forgive. We are to be reconciled to others. We're to esteem others. A, a humble person's focus is the mission, uh, which our mission is always other people. And we don't do things in the church just to, to do it. We do it based on people, right? On reaching people, fellowshipping with people, whatever. Um, and the humble person yields himself to Christ for their glory and for the good of others. Um, the humble person is not worried about recognition. They don't need that because they know who they are in Christ. Um, and and. Verses 5 through 8, it says, Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who existed in the form of God, who, although existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but 
emptied himself, taking on the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of man and being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Jesus, who was God, who was sinless, and he had all that God had at his disposal, at his command, he served others. The creator became man. The creator, the God of all the universe, became a servant. He came to serve. How often in scripture do we see others serving Jesus? I mean, Mary, you know, washed Jesus' feet or anointed his feet. And she got rebuked from that. Not from Jesus, but got rebuked. Um, But it was Jesus who served. I know that some of you might be saying, well, I got that one down. I serve, 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 serve. Um, And the problem is not really what we do. The problem is our attitude in doing it. Do you want recognition? Are you proud of your service? Oh, look at all that I do. You know, Jesus emptied himself. And as I was writing those words on my page, I wrote beside it, jar. And I know, because I started just visualizing an empty jar. And an empty jar, you look at it in the, der, it's empty. There's nothing in it. But if there's even anything left in it, it's not empty, right? I mean, if, if I... Scraping out a peanut butter jar, trick, right? It's hard to do. And I can, you know, if somebody said, is that jar empty? And I said, well, I mean, like, what are you going to use it for? It's empty to throw in the garbage can. Get the correlation there? (laughs) It's empty to be thrown away. But it's not empty if you're wanting to put something else in it. Because it can't be filled with something else as long as there's something in it. So we're to be empty. That means that... There is nothing of us left that we are preoccupied with. You know, our minds are deceitful. I mean, they just are more than what we want to think. In Galatians 6, 3, it says, If anyone thinks he's something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Um, I don't really like this verse because, because I deceive myself all the time. And let me give you an example. We were serving in a church down in Louisiana, and Danny was associate pastor at the time and worked with youth and, and stuff. And so during a service, I got convicted about something. And so I come to the altar, and I'm trying to get right with the Lord about that. And I feel somebody beside me. And I look up, and it's my pastor. And suddenly, in the middle of being broken... <laughs> And trying to get right with the Lord, I suddenly go, ooh, I want to make sure that I pray spiritual because our pastor is listening. And I don't want him to think that our, the associate pastor's wife is, you know, doesn't have her act together and that she's a mess, which obviously y'all that know me, bless your heart. And, um, and so immediately while I'm praying, okay, now I want you to understand what I'm doing. I'm doing something spiritual and I'm trying to impress someone (laughs) while I'm doing that spiritual thing of being broken before the Lord and uh, I was obviously trying to patch myself up super quick um, so that I wouldn't look broken to my pastor okay y'all our hearts are deceitful our hearts, we, we think we have it together. We think we're okay. We think we're humble and all of that. And, and even while we're doing something spiritual, we can do it for the wrong reasons. And so we have to check our heart. Um, you know, many of us are willing to serve, but we just haven't emptied ourselves. Um, you know, it, we don't, we want to serve as long as it just doesn't cost us too much. We want to keep our pride intact. We want to serve our way because, you know, we have rights and, uh, we want to be recognized for our service or we think it's like earned us respect. 
You know, like I've been doing that. Those young whippersnappers coming in, they, you know, can't tell me what to do um, because we think that our time of service earns us respect or earns us maybe even um, uh, a louder voice than those around us. You know, when the church is making a decision, we think, oh, maybe that's earned us the right to be heard. Y'all, we only have a right to be heard because we are believers and that Christ has died for us. Um, And so his service cost him everything. He loved serving sacrificially. The cool thing about emptying yourself is that when we've truly emptied ourselves, Um, and we're not really worried about recognition, and we're not worried about getting our way and everybody doing it our way, Um, we find that we have more joy. You know, that, that need for recognition is replaced with joy, and then that sacrifice is no longer a sacrifice because you're not worried about yourself anymore. Um, Okay, I want to read from Luke 6, 27 through 36, if y'all want to look it up. Um, And if you don't, that's fine too, because I'm about to read it. Okay, Luke 6, 27 through 36, again, please hang in there with me. But I say this to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also. Whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it. And just as you want men to treat you, treat them in the same way. And if you love them, those who love you, What credit is that to you? For even sinners love those that love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount. Love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be the sons of the most high for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the evil men be merciful just as your father is merciful okay now let's just get down to another step harder you know we're to love our neighbors as ourselves now then we're gonna love like Jesus loved and now let's just talk about another way that Jesus loved Jesus loved difficult people he loved people that were hard to love this whole scripture talks about your enemy and uh Romans 5 8 says God demonstrated his own love for us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Um, You know, one of the ways that I find it easier to love difficult people is to recognize that I'm a difficult person. You know, I'm not always easy to love. You know, Christ emptied himself and he served others not because they were lovable, but he served them while they were undeserving. And, you know, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for me. I didn't earn his love. And we don't earn each other's love. As believers in Christ, we're to love the unlovable. We're to love the difficult people. Um, Elizabeth Elliot said this, The best way to find if you really have a servant's heart is to see what your reaction is when someone treats you like a servant. And I was like, whoa. You know, it's okay. We're we're okay with serving um, as long as we're appreciated for what we do. And um, 
So like what I said, so one of the things that helps me to love difficult people is to realize that I am a difficult person, that I have, I'm a sinner, that I have baggage. We all have baggage. Um, and we get appalled and disgusted by um, other people's actions to only come to realize that we just sin differently than they do. You know, have you ever said, I'd never do that? Mm -hmm. So we've put ourselves up here, and, you know, I would never do that. The problem is we might not. We just sin different from that person. We would do something that they wouldn't do. So we have to recognize that we are difficult people. That's the way that I can love <laughs> other difficult people. Um, I know that you may be thinking that we were, um, you know, love was going to be more of a fluffy word, but if you are in any kind of relationship, you know that love is work, right? I mean, and love is a choice. Love is not an emotion. We choose to love people. And the reason why I know that love is, is not something that um, is, is always a feeling because um, there were some times I didn't just, I wasn't crazy about my children, I mean, you know, I knew I loved them, but I wasn't crazy about them. My emotions didn't feel loving at the moment, but I knew that I loved them. So I know that love, but even in that moment when they were irritating the stew out of me, I would have stepped in front of a bus for them because I loved them, and I knew that I did. So love is not an emotion. So, you know, how we love one another in your family, in the body of Christ, is not dependent on um, how we feel about them because God commands us to do it. And so we make the choice to love one another. Um, okay, so... Um, this wasn't the mushy kind of love. This was the hard working kind of love we were talking about right now. And, but I'll be honest with you, nothing turns me to mush more than just understanding that Christ loves me in spite of who I am. He loves me. Um, I want to wrap up this session with this. We are to have the mind that is in Christ Jesus. We are to empty ourselves. Um, we have to realize that if we want to be filled with love for other people, then we got to get rid of the stuff that is filling us now. We got to get rid of ourselves in order to be filled. We want to be filled with his agape love, with his selfless, sacrificial, unconditional love. Okay, so as we fo focus on our calling, as we love as Christ loved, as we serve others, esteeming others above ourselves, then the world will see Christ in us, and we will automatically be united. Okay, let's go to the Lord in a quick prayer, and then we're going to just give you a 15-minute break, okay, 15 minutes. Lord, thank you so much, Lord that you loved us, that you love us unconditionally. Lord, I thank you that you created us to need each other. And Lord, I pray that our hearts would just be um, open and receptive. Lord, I, I'm sure already some of us are, there's, there's things that are hiding in the darkest crevices of our heart that don't look like you. Lord, that we haven't totally emptied ourselves because we're still thinking about our rights and what we want and what we deserve instead of just emptying ourselves of, of, of ourselves so that you can fill us with your spirit, fill us with love for one another, that we will respond to diff difficult people in a way that brings honor and glory to you, that above all else, that you will be high and lifted up and that others will see our love for one another and want you. And it's in your holy and mighty name I pray. Amen. Alrighty, we're just doing a 15 minute.